This conference will now be recorded. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, somebody else is coming in. Who is that? Two more. Oh, is that you, Trina? Okay. Trina, is that you? I guess she can't talk to us yet. There she is. There she is. Hey, Trina, are you with us now? Or is that not Trina? Uh, <laughs> that's Trina. She probably is just getting her um, her um, audio situated. Oh, OK. <clears throat> I apologize for the quiet, you guys. I wasn't um, prepared to run the meeting, so. <laughs> That's fine, no problem. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm actually still working, so that's why I'm not here physically, but y'all will be able to hear me in a minute. But um, yeah, so um, today kind of threw us for a loop. Um, but how is everybody doing? Good. Good. Thank God. Everybody's hanging in there. That's always good. That's always a plus. If you hear children in the background, I'm still at work. <laughs> um, it's cold. Yeah, Frank and um, Kathleen have snow. We have freezing ice so i think i would have i would rather have snow right now than freezing ice because i literally have to drive in this mist that is scary right so um but trina are you able to talk now is she frozen she looks frozen okay did you have a topic that you wanted us to start with? I, I didn't really. Um, I just kind of wanted to check in and see how everyone was doing, where everybody was mentally, emotionally. Um, I know the holiday season can sometimes be, you know, put an extra damper on things because it's the holiday. Sometimes we may not be able to get some of those things that we want to get for people. Um, and even now with COVID, we can't see some of the people that we want to see because we're high risk. We can't have everybody around us, you know, so just kind of wanted to see where everybody was mentally and everything like that and um, just check in on everybody. That was it. 
nothing fancy smancy or anything like that. Right. Just kind of do a check in. I think we all have a and everything. I can hear her now, Trina. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? She's just teasing Hello? us. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, I hear you shots are off and on. I think it's just the weather for a lot of us. And it might yeah. be, you know, affecting satellite. So sorry. About it's raining that. crazy right here right now. Mm. Yeah, it's raining crazy. Yeah. So Trina, you're good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing what I have to do here. And um, you and Susie got it now. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, Trina. Oh, she muted herself. Okay, well, um, I guess I'll I'll start off with what Chasta was saying. So it is a very different this year with um, with COVID and everything. I've got eleven grandchildren. And I'm not going, I had to tell my daughter that she can't send my granddaughter to come be with me this year because it just doesn't feel safe for her to fly over here and spend a couple weeks. So I know we're all making sacrifices like that. And then we have the big, like, do we get the vaccine? Do we not get the vaccine? You know, everybody's thinking about that. I think I keep going back and forth. And I think right now, if they were to offer it to me today, I'd be like, yeah, I'll go ahead and get it. Um, just so that I could be more social, you know, with my grandkids. Um, but I definitely am toning down the holidays, didn't do as much shopping and stuff. And, and so I definitely feel the effects of it. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to go around, um, Barbara, do you want to tell us, um, your thoughts on those topics and how it's affecting you? Okay. Um, as I'm kind of same with you um, on the vaccine. Um, I think if it was offered me to me today, I would probably take it. Um, I'm I'm trying to weigh out the you know positives and negatives, and knowing that we're not the first to get it, that the healthcare workers are getting it. Um, I guess it's, I'm going to see how they do. Uh, and I'll talk to my doctors and see what they recommend. Um, as far as the holidays, I haven't seen, I've seen my parents twice, I think, this year um, that wasn't on Zoom and only once on Zoom because they're 79 and 91. And so it's, it's a challenge for them to <laughs> handle the computer. Um, but they live in an independent living place that has a guest apartment that they're going to rent for my husband and I for Christmas Eve day, night and Christmas day. So we're gonna take, I, I said, you know, this year it's gonna balance with how much do I watch the physical health? How much do I watch the mental health? And being close to family, and if they're willing to take a risk at their age, I'm willing to take a risk. And I think they're probably more concerned about me than they are about themselves. Good. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's hard making those decisions, but definitely no judgment here because everybody has to, you know, weigh it on their own and make their own choices. Well, thank you for sharing, Barbara. How about you, Jim? Well, we're, I don't know, I, I'm just waiting to get the year over. I think that's uh, probably, uh, look forward to 2021. Hopefully it can't be any worse than this year. Uh, we have eight grandchildren. We haven't seen them in months, so that's difficult. And uh, even though uh, what next next week it's Christmas Eve, uh, you know, we, we're just not going to be seeing the family. So it's a uh, it's a uh, unique year, but uh, things always could be worse, and hopefully we'll never find out. So uh, we're just trying to trying to make it through like everybody else. Right, you don't need COVID on top of everything else, right? No, sure don't need that. Uh, I mean, as far as being diagnosed, I've had, I had a couple biopsies in the last month, so I had to be tested before the the, the procedure. So uh, I've tested uh, negative twice uh, so far, but 
but I have a lot of people that we know that are fighting, so it's a it's difficult time for everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Jim. Sure. Okay, so Trina, did you, um, you want to take over? You want me to just continue going around or what do you want to do? Um, let's try going around a little longer. I have a game that I want us to play, so I don't know how this is going to work out with our technical uh, on front scenes issues that we're having on today, but uh, just go ahead. Let's, let's okay. go around about. Absolutely. Okay, so um, Deanna, you want to go ahead and weigh in? Um, yeah, so um, I finally got into John Hopkins um after a long period of time so um i have to say i'm really impressed with it i like it a lot better than ken um they communicate um they get right back to you um they answer the phone um so i'm really um i think now I'll be able to figure out what's going on with me um and they have they just started it was their first one i think last week uh support group for um, people with sarcoidosis. And um, they started out, they had two speakers, and the first one was on COVID and the, um, the uh, vaccine um, and tests which ones are better um, to use. So uh, basically they went through the two, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine shots, and they said they both um, have about the same rate. It's like 94% effective. Um, what they were talking about was the Pfizer one has a lot of side effects and uh, it can last for days. And um, so Moderna didn't have the side effects that Pfizer, the Pfizer one does. So um, I'm, when they tell me I'm going to get the Moderna one, I'm not going to get the Pfizer vaccine. Um, so, and they, they, they went through the whole vaccine thing and, you know, said it was fine, um, for everyone to get. And, um, with Fauci's recommendations, the government were in the first group, but each state, uh, can make up their own who's going to get it when they don't have to go by those guidelines. So, um, I live in Maryland, so, um, Governor Hogan's doing it a little bit different, but, I, I also don't want to be, you know, one of the first ones to get it either. So <laughs> I'm okay with that. But um, they did uh, talk a lot about it. And um, they were talking about the antigen test. And oh, something they said a couple of times that I'm going to, I have my next appointment with my doctor in January. I'm going to talk to him about. They were saying now, John Hopkins was saying that sarcoidosis is not an autoimmune disease. They said it's environment and you, you have it in your genetics, they believe, and then something in the environment is triggering it. Um, and they don't know what that is, but they said more than once that it was not an autoimmune disease. And that's the first time I've heard that. Um, so I'm going to talk to him about that. Um, in January and see exactly like did I, I mean, she said it more than once. Um, so they did go over that. And then they also had somebody um, with talk about depression because of the holidays, um, I'm sure is one of the reasons that was brought up and how, how an autoimmune disease can, uh, depression can develop from that disease. Um, so that was very interesting. Um, and one of the takeaways I wrote down is he was saying, uh, uh, turmeric is really good, um, to take, um, cause it reduces inflammation. So that's what I got out of that. And then we broke out in small groups and, um, my doctor was actually part of my group. There was only six of us and they did that for like 20 minutes. And then we went back to the big group, like everybody together again. So, um, it was their first one, and, and um, it, 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 I think it went very well. Um, but it's funny, they're, you know, they're talking about the same topics that you're bringing up tonight, you know, as far as the holidays. And um, I don't have any grandkids yet, 
my sons just recently got married. Um, and they'll cry a lot because his boy pet is one of five. <laughs> but um, they're going to come over. They're quarantined for two weeks right now. They both work out of their homes right now. And that's what we're doing. So they're going to come over here the 23rd to the 24th. And then at 9 24th, they're going to go to her family. So, um, and that's normally what we do. Um, so, um, should be pretty good, I guess. Thank you so much for sharing all that, Deanna. Um, I have heard before that sarcoidosis is not an autoimmune disease, but every time it's ever come up like in a group or something, they um, it usually starts an argument that I don't feel well enough armed for it. And so I just try to stay out of it. But um, I love what you shared about Johns Hopkins because it is always good to hear about um, doctors that you guys like because um, you know how challenging it is trying to find where to be treated. And that support group sounds awesome. I'm so glad you got to participate in that. That's really great. Thank you for sharing that, Deanna. Um, Juanita, are you there? Hi there. I'm messing with my computer. This is the first time I've used this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I figured out how to do the camera, but I'll figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> Well, Frank and Kathleen are not here tonight because they've got so much snow in New York that I guess they don't have internet. Um, so we're filling in for them. And so we're just going around and asking everybody um, where you're at with the vaccine, if you're thinking you want to do it, and how you're feeling about the holidays coming up, if, if it's different for you this year than it normally is, or how if there's any way we can support you today um holidays it's different this year but part of it is all of my children are legal adults now so they're busy feeling their oats or as we used to say smelling themselves and covid has now changed how we do things anyway i mean thanksgiving was a mishmash of who went where because i had covid during just before the holiday so I couldn't go anywhere, <laughs> not until I was sure I was okay. As to the vaccine, I've already had it, and I have a whole bunch of reasons why I won't. Um, and I know there are people out there that are having them. One of my comments, I just posted on Facebook the other day in the group why I won't have it, and I gave my reasons. One, I've already had it. And so, two, I really don't have a good handle on what these side effects are. They're like it's 97% effective. Well, I want to know what happens to, that's the latest I've heard before it was 95. I want to know what happens to the people who it's not working for, you know? <laughs> I mean, it seems like what I'm hearing, I had a very mild case of, of COVID. I just lost smell and taste and that was it. No temperatures, no aches and pains, nothing. So I'm thinking that was a pretty good case. And I don't know that I would be happy with side effects that knocked me off my feet for two or three days. Um, then too, if you, you can't tell from my voice or whatever, I'm a black female. John Hopkins and medicine in general does not have a very good name in the community. Too much of our, life, of our history shows that they used people because they could as their test subjects. Many times without anesthesia. And uh, John Hopkins was, was pretty famous for what he did to people, um, you know, and I understand that was a sign of the times, but it's still very prevalent in our society, especially when you consider the, that, you know, every time you hear it, I'm sure you've heard about the Tuskegee Airmen. Um, well into the seventies, they never gave them the cure for syphilis because they wanted to see what would happen. So I'm a little nervous about stepping up and going, I want to be one of the first ones to try it. But conversely, because a lot of people are like me, we also don't have enough of my population to be able to test to find out what the results of the test are anyway. So I'm a little nervous about all of that as well. Um, you know, if there's not enough of people like me who you can say, okay, most people like this have these side effects, um, that I'm nervous. And then I've got a myriad of stuff, as you all probably do too. Sarcoidosis. Uh, um, I have it in the skin. I have it in the 
you know, I have skin, I have it in my heart, I have um, in my eyes, which is not being fun right now. And I have, it started in, or at least where I found out I first had it was in my lungs. Also, I'm diabetic and I have rheumatoid arthritis and a variety of other com comorbidity issues. I'm a little nervous to like, what will that thing trigger off? So as far as the vaccine goes, I take the flu vaccine every year. So <laughs> as far as the vaccine goes, I'm going to wait it out for a year or two before I go waiting in to see what it's going, what it'll be like. That's it for me. I totally respect that, Juanita, because I have actually gone back and forth on the decision too. And it's a very, very personal choice. And um, yeah, and I respect your views about Johns Hopkins and that, yeah, the United States has some sketchy stuff in our past and um, that it does make decisions like this hard. So yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, let's see. So Wendy, how are you doing tonight? Are you there? Hello? Okay. Well, maybe she's busy right now. Um, yeah. So, Rick, Rick, I, I'm sorry. I, hi, Rick. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to check in with you or if I'm just supposed to pretend you're not there. <laughs> Sorry, you, you broke up. <clears throat> I'm looking at my notes. You told us in the, in the prostate cancer period that um, your doctor may have sarcoidosis. Is that correct? Yes, I was diagnosed, and you uh, put me onto this group, and here I am. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm so pleased, and yes. um, they are terrific people. And I. Yes. I am sure they've yeah. been really, really supportive to you and, and helped you understand a little bit about about this condition. And so glad that you're in two of our groups. Just yeah. Don't join, don't join any more. No, I mean, no, two is, two is plenty, thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can come to Speaking Freely tonight because that's all in the, you know, all in the mix. We'd, we'd love to have you in Speaking Freely, but we don't want to see you in any other, other different conditions, you know. Mm. No, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. So, but yeah, I just, um, I'll just hang in for a little while. But Susie, you are doing a dynamite job, love. I mean, fantastic. Yes. And um, um, I, like I said, just sorry to hear that um, that Frank and, and, and Kathy are getting uh, hammered by the snow. Yeah, the weather is crazy right now, it seems like everywhere. Yeah. But um, thank you so much for the compliment, Rick. Yeah, you, you're in, if I'm my memory, I'm digging back into my memory. Are you in Utah? I am, yes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. my uh, We have snow, but it's not, it's not causing problems. It's just normal snow. Normal snow, yeah. Well, I tell you, um, it's been pretty cold. At least, it's not cold by... The, the, the Easterners think we're, I'm a wuss, so I, I'm, I don't even want to say. But it has been cold, very cold at night here. I'm down 20 miles north of the border in Arizona. Um, oh. And uh, I mean, it was nice today. I mean, it got up around 70 and I, I, I went out for a quick bike ride. But that's the first time this week it's been colder than that. So, but you know, my blood has gotten thin. Yeah, yeah. there's a reason snowbirds go to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'll just stay silent and listen to you. It looks like you have a caller, so I'll, I'll let you field your caller. Okay, thank you. I don't, I don't see the caller. Oh, I, you don't? Uh-uh. 
Um, who, do, who opened the room? Caller one. Yeah. A T. No, there's somebody. Somebody came in on the telephone. Who might that be? Want to identify who came in on the telephone? Somebody calling us on the phone. Well, they'll speak up. I'm, I'm okay. Guys, you don't see it. Let me just. See it. You should be an organizer. Um, it looks like it's muted. Yeah. Oh, and they left. Okay. They were in the wrong room. But I did see Wendy's microphone go green for a second. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah. Wendy, are you ready to check in? Sure. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm trying to, you know, stay positive. Are you uh, are you prepared for the holidays? Yeah. I What's that noise in the background? I get a lot of We're getting some feedback from you, Jim. Could you mute when you're speaking? That'd be great. There Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I asked uh, Paul to put up the Christmas lights outside so all my neighbors could enjoy the lights, you know, when they walk by because of this COVID. And he did such a beautiful job. It was just like I look out there and I'm like, wow, that's a nice Christmas present, you know. And then he bakes me these breads and stuff and he writes, I love you. And he makes me soup and he cuts the carrots and hearts. Oh my God. He listened to him. He's like, oh my gosh. But I really like, you know, appreciate him so much in my life. And I'm so lucky that I have his support. And I know that with the support that I get from my family and him, that things will get really good for me. That's so wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that, Wendy. That's great. Yeah, I'm not I'm not getting Christmas lights up this year. It hasn't even crossed my mind. So that's beautiful. I really appreciate that. That's neat. Okay, so Trina was going to play a game, but it looks like she's having internet issues too because she keeps coming and going. Um, Chasta, where are you at? Are you still working? Are you able to jump in? Oh, I can't hear you. Yes. Oh, me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you can, um, I'm actually on my way home. So if okay. you can about 10 or 15 more minutes and then I'll be here. But Trina can go ahead and do what she's got to do. Hey, Rick. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, oh, and I just wanted to comment, Juanita. I know what it's like. I have um, diabetes and sarcoidosis as well. And I just, it. I hate it. I hate it so bad. <laughs> I feel like we shouldn't, it's probably the same with like you, Jim, having the prostate cancer, the sarcoidosis. It just, it just feels like not fair when they get piled on top of each other like You're that. It's so not fair. <laughs> it is so not well, fair. Yeah. It always could be worse and hopefully we'll never find out. <laughs> so, so deal with what we have to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Trina, are you ready to do your game? Trina, can you talk to us? I don't think she can hear you because she keeps on pointing to her ears. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I don't know if um, she's going to be able to do that or if it's going to have to wait for another time. So, okay. Oh, Trina, are you able to talk to us? No? Okay. Um, gosh, you guys, I'm so sorry. I, um, <laughs> I wasn't prepared to run this much of the meeting. You know, Susie, how about if I do help you along here? I got a question. What's that? Um, you know how they're fighting this virus that is so horrific? 
with this bio war thing that they're using. Why can't they do that with sarcoid? Since we have these granules in our body that they destroy with the mess, the thyroxite people use, mm -hmm. the salsept, the um, inflamab, um, that is proven to do that. Why can't they just genetically do that? Why can't they just go in there and write a genome and destroy it just like those medicines do? Because the medicines we have are failing us. They yeah. really are failing us. They're making us sick in another way. I think the big answer to that is that COVID is so big that it's on the news every day. And we've got, um, you know, I, I don't even know the numbers off the top of my head anymore, but you know, like everywhere there, all the beds in the ICUs are taken up and it's the percentage of people that it's affecting, that it's motivating them to find these cures. And with sarcoidosis, we don't have those numbers. It's much more rare. So even though it's a big deal to those of us that are dealing with it, um, we're a very small percentage of the population. And unfortunately, um, I don't know if this is a controversial thing to say, but the drug companies are run by dollars. And um, so they, they are more motivated to find cures for diseases that affect more people. And, um, but that's why we have like the foundation for sarcoidosis research. And um, that's why we have to keep fighting to advocate for um, awareness and fundraising for the research. And that from what I've been told, it's a lot better now than it was 20 years ago. I mean, as far as the research and everything, but that's the big reason why COVID's affecting way, way more people than sarcoidosis is. And so that's why it gets that different response, if that makes sense. Thank you. So you're very, very welcome. Yeah, I actually went through, that was part of my grieving process because I had, when I had to quit working, I got really angry and then I started feeling, when I learned about how the drug companies work and, um, and about orphan diseases, they call them, the ones that are small enough that the drug companies are like, oh, it's not worth our time, then um, that really made me upset. And see, you can probably hear it in my voice, it still makes me emotional. <laughs> um, but hold on. Yeah, just... me, it seems like it's really doing that with me too, and I think it's all of us are, because I see so many posts on all the um, sarcoid forums, you know, people, we're all, and I, you know, I know there's some people here that, Trina, like, um, have, um, you know, these forums, um, and people really speak their mind, and I think it's great that they have a chance to say what they feel. Um, yeah. You know, um, feelings about things, you know, how we can, um, how the doctors are not, you know, stepping up for us. And I found out recently in the last two days that on the West Coast, most of the hospitals are owned by the same company. And um, that is a huge problem because they're not um, actually um, looking out for um, their patients. Um, and especially for the patients that have rare diseases and cancer. Um, yeah. And they're charging them phenomenal amounts of money, and they're saying they're a nonprofit, and that greed should be illegal. It's another horrible thing that's going on in this country, and why is it, when are they going to start doing... Um, that was on 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes. Why aren't we going to do something about that? Like, why is this happening? I know we have this COVID thing here, but it's not fair. And why is it that nobody knows about it? I mean, they're, they're even telling doctors not to go to perform at high levels because when they perform at high levels, they're not going to pay them the money. So they're not doing their jobs. 
Yeah. No, I really I cannot. Can I, inter this is Chasta, can I interject really, really quickly? Um, we also have to have the understanding of what research really is. Research is just money. That's all it is. So when you have the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research, who gives all their money to research opportunities, you have to look at all the other organizations that are giving money to research opportunities as well. So if, you, if we can just take breast cancer for um, example, we have the Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Foundation, but then you also have other entities who donate to breast cancer as far as like the American Cancer Society and those types of avenues. We only have one, um, we only have one known foundation who's dedicated strictly to sarcoidosis research. And I agree that the doctors can do more but you got to understand that people are not going to do research if they don't have the money that's why a lot of us push donate the money to foundation for sarcoidosis research and if we have any other organizations who are um 5123 and nonprofit, a lot of those organizations don't give money to research they just give money to their known cause which nothing is wrong with that don't get me wrong but a lot of these companies are driven like you said susie by money strictly money money has to be there in order for them to do anything i agree it needs to be more recognition and all that kind of stuff like that but we also got to understand and take heed that we're a rare disease we have to have certain numbers in order to stay a rare disease so if we go over those numbers or anything like that then we automatically get knocked out of being a rare disease so it's a lot of entities into it besides doctors just speaking up or patients just talking loud and all that kind of stuff like that. So we also have to take all those no, other I'm things saying, into consideration. I, no, that's not what I was saying, Chasta. What I was saying is these hospitals, they're in the West Coast, they're a conglomerate owned by one entity, and they're actually telling the doctors what to do and how to care for the, the patients. And they're not encouraging them to find anything for these people to help them. That's what I'm saying, Chasta. I didn't say that. Um, okay. I I was actually agreeing with you, Wendy. I was just giving another example of the research part. That's all it was. All right, all right. Thank you, um, Wendy and Chasta. Um, so, does anybody else have a topic that they wanted to bring up or a question that they've been wanting to ask and haven't had a chance to? Gosh, everybody's so quiet tonight. <laughs> oh, goodness. Susie, you know, I was wondering, yeah. last time you spoke, you said that you were having problems. In, uh, you're on the West Coast, right? I'm in Utah, yeah, so almost the West do, Coast. Do you know the hospital that is that owns your hospital? or I mean, the entity that owns your hospital? Is it part of that conglomerate? Um, no, yeah. Utah is a little different. Utah is, it's... Yeah, <laughs> Utah is very different. Um, I think the West Coast, like California and um, Washington, I'm not sure about Oregon, but they do have this situation like what you're talking about. Um, here in Utah, we have two organizations. We have the University of Utah and then something called Intermountain Healthcare. And your insurance usually covers one or the other, not both of them, which is frustrating because, you know, the, yeah. So University of Utah is a research hospital. Um, but um, yeah, so we're, we're in a different situation. And I'm sorry, I don't know a lot about um, the situation that you're talking about out in California. I have heard about it. Um, I try really hard not to, um, not to, dwell so much on the things that, I mean, not to discount what you're saying, but I try really hard not to dwell on things that I can't control because it it brings me down. Like Deanna was saying that when you yeah, have- different. I write my congressman. I, I, I have the liberty of knowing a lot of um, legislators and I write them and I've had a lot done personally from, um, towards child um, advocating and stuff in my past. So 
-hmm. I'm definitely um, encouraged to do something about it. And when I and Paul, we saw this on 60 Minutes, um, people need to get involved with this. And I'm definitely going to. And so, it may it drives me and I'm I'm pretty excited about, you know, doing things for others. And I'm very proud of myself for doing that. So, Wendy, th this is Rick. Um, I haven't seen the 60 Minutes piece, but I've heard about it. And Renata Lowers, who's on our advisory board, um, told me about it. She's, she was one of our caregiver monitors. I'm, I'm pretty familiar with Sutter. Um, and I, I'm not here to defend them, but I am here to say that there are many other hospital groups in California. Um, and they're not the biggest. I think Kaiser is the biggest. Um, and they were Sutter talking is, about Kaiser. Sorry. They were talking about Kaiser. Well, I had heard they were talking about Sutter, the Sutter organization. Now, Kaiser is a whole different ball game. Um, Kaiser cannot be compared to most other hospitals because it's an HMO. If you're, you're probably familiar with what that is, and it. It's kind of like the National Health Service in the UK, but on a smaller basis. So once you sign up for Kaiser, you um, all of the services are provided by the Kaiser Permanente organization. And Kaiser is in several states. So it's it's most it's largest in California, but it's in it's in um, let me think Washington. Um, it's in, I think, Virginia or Maryland. Um, there's about five states that it's in. And it's a difficult system to really um, to be a part of if you have more than a community need. And I am very familiar with Kaiser. I've got to tell you, if it's Kaiser, because I was a Kaiser patient for Ooh, 15 years, and when I got diagnosed with with cancer, um, I fought with Kaiser to get the treatment that I wanted. So in the Kaiser system, you've really got to be your best advocate. Sutter is a whole nother ball game, um, and that's what Renata told me it was. Um, but Kaiser, you know, I, Kaiser has its pros and its cons, and if if you for, for run of the mill medical service, it's a great system. It's easy to find a doctor. It's easy to get a referral. It's easy to get a second opinion. Drugs are reasonable. Um, it's just that most of the time they're only delivering community standard medicine. When you've got a rare disease like sarcoidosis, um, it's not a great place. It's not a good system to be in. And so I would agree with you on that. But you know, yeah, because we have one over here in Buffalo, New York. We, I mean, they're all over. Kaiser? Yeah. No, no, it's not the same. Kaiser Permanente isn't in New York State. Oh, okay, so it's a different Kaiser? I don't know what it is, but it's, it's not a Kaiser cancer Permanente. treatment. And Kaiser Permanente is not, I, I wouldn't characterize it as being one of the largest hospital owners in, in, in the country. Um, I mean, they're very big. They've got 11 million people, I think, um, the last I heard in, in well, they, California. They were stating that they're a nonprofit. Um, they so, are. Yeah, they are. Why? They're making so much money. I don't get it. I, it's just, well, because that's it's, the way they, 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 I mean, nonprofits can make a lot of money. It's a question of what they do with the money. I mean, well, they that's know, what they're saying. They're saying that the executives are all hoarding, hoarding all the money and the common people aren't getting the services they okay, need. But, okay. Uh, okay. Hey, but you let, guys. Let me, let, me just respond, let me just respond to that. The American Cancer Association gets a lot of money. And they they're are, a nonprofit. And they're, they're a nonprofit. And they pay their executive over $2 million. Yeah, but they're not a hospital. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, but they pay their executive over $2 million. So, you know, somebody's got to run this. You're not going to get somebody running it for $100,000. I mean, these are large organizations to run, and it's all well and good. People saying, oh, well, I heard this on 60 Minutes, but you've got to go a little beyond that. If I can interject, please, you guys. Um, so I, 
I want to point out that advocacy is really important. I've actually been to Washington, D.C. I got runner's injuries on my knees from walking around Capitol Hill with my walker. If you didn't know that was possible, now you do. And I talked to my senators and I have talked to my representatives. Um, the point that I was trying to make is that even though it's important to advocate, we have to remember our mental health. And we have to remember that we don't have to advocate 24 seven. And what I'd really like to do today is try to end this on a positive because we're going into the holidays, which is supposed to be a wonderful celebratory time of the year. And it's already hard because we've got COVID and the vaccine and freaking sarcoidosis. And um, so I think it's better to deal with these social issues at another time. So um, I do appreciate your input, Wendy, but I'd like to end this topic. And um, yeah, so Chasta, did you have something that you wanted to i was just going to talk about christmas <laughs> okay all right go ahead you talk about christmas chasta yeah so um i think everybody else um had talked about their plans and stuff for christmas and everything hanukkah. like that huh hanukkah i celebrate hanukkah okay well whatever everybody is doing for the holiday season let me say that um uh me i'm not doing anything <laughs> um i have a few events we have a few events that are happening um at the school over the break um but other than that not really doing anything the same way we uh spent for thanksgiving we're going to do the same thing for christmas and all that kind of stuff we put up a christmas tree we have some fake gifts up under the tree that i wrapped um there are empty boxes so it's just a little visual effect that makes me think that I'm going to open up something on Christmas. We ain't open up nothing. <laughs> but um, other than that, I did get one surprise. My favorite football team is the Carolina Panthers. So I have a Carolina Panther wreath um, that someone gave me. And so that was awesome. But um, that's my holiday season, New Year's. And then I'll celebrate my 16th sarcoidosis anniversary on January the 5th. So that's about it for me. That's great. Thank you, Chasta. And um, Wendy, you're right. There are a lot of holidays coming up. We've got Hanukkah. This year, I'm learning all about Yule, and I think that's really fun. Um, so I think let's go around. And it doesn't have to be about the holidays, but if you guys want to share um, something that you're looking forward to because it's going to be January. It's going to be 2021 before we have another support group meeting. So let's start with Deanna. Do you have something that you're looking forward to? Okay, sorry. Uh, we do have a trip planned in, uh, to go to Florida in March. Um, to Fiesta Key. We were supposed to go this year and had to move it to 2021. So I'm hoping we can still uh, do that in March. So that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> that's exciting. You said Fiesta Key? At uh, Fiesta Key. It's oh, in Florida. <laughs> okay. it's, uh, it's near Sarasota. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, I'm sending positive energy for you. Hopefully that trip goes through. That's Thank exciting. You. How about you, Jim? Well, uh, <clears throat> try and stay positive. I think in uh, hopefully uh, looking very forward to 2021 that uh, we can get back to some semblance of normal. Uh, one thing I really miss is the family and not being together and doing the customary things that we're we took for granted, and now that we're not able to do them, we appreciate them a lot more. So uh, just looking for uh, getting into 2021. Uh, it's funny, if everybody at the beginning of 2020 it had such great promise, and now uh, we just can't wait to uh, put it to bed. So uh, 2021 has to be better and for all of us. So that's, that's my wishes to everyone. 
Thank you. Yes, that is definitely my wish too. <laughs> How about you, Barbara? Um, yeah, probably mostly just looking forward to to seeing people again, to someday being able to, to hug friends and family again, to this all being over. <laughs> right? I'm a big hugger. I feel like I have a huge hug deficit. <laughs> and then my grandkids, when I see them, they're like, Granny, why are you always wearing a mask? Well, <laughs> I don't to get sick. But yeah. It annoys me because I was wearing a mask before all of this started because I'd gotten out of the hospital in November of last year. And now if I wear a mask, people are going to think it's political. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Uh, how about you, Juanita? I'm looking forward to an ending completely and totally. Um, it didn't, 2020 is not going out the way I expected it to. You know, um, my daughter, youngest daughter and I have been fighting over school. And so I'm hoping she gets her ish together um, before the end of the school year. It's been interesting. Um, plus, there's a lot of activities that family planned um, that this year that we postponed until the winter, even though I'm not that optimistic that we'll be going anywhere before the end, this time next year. Um, but I do feel like, and my mother's from the islands and they had to shut the islands down because when they let people in, the, they got a huge case. The whole family came in with COVID. <laughs> it's an island that had 30 cases of COVID throughout the year. And then recently they brought another 39 in with just one family, who knows? So I'm looking forward to a time when that's not going to be a thing. You know, like flu, we don't stop for the flu. I'm looking forward to a time that that's not going to stop everything. In the meantime, Christmas is my birthday. And so uh, this is the first time in a long time I've looked forward to it. I hate Christmas. I hate Christmas because, you know, it's the end of the year. And because it's my birthday, I want to focus on what I haven't done and what I have, you know. But this year is like... I made it to the end of 2020. That's an accomplishment in and of itself. And I want to, I want to celebrate that. So that's it for me. Well, happy birthday, Juanita. I am going, my birthday is December 31st, and I'm going to be 50 this year. Yay. So that's what I'm Whoa. looking forward to. Congratulations. <laughs> a half a century. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Trina? Can you talk to us? I don't think she can. I don't think she can. Dang it. I keep trying. All right, Chasta, it's your turn. You want to tell us what you're looking forward to? Um, um, it's only two events I'm really kind of looking forward to. Um in 2021, and I consider both of those my birthdays. Um, of course, January the 5th was the day that I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. I was diagnosed at the age of 18 and said I wouldn't live to see 21. But on March the 3rd, March the 9th, I will be 35. So those are the two events, January the 5th and March the 9th, um, that I'm looking forward to. Um, we're big, my family's big on celebrating everything. So we celebrate milestones, we celebrate birthdays. I mean, we celebrate everything. It, it's Friday and some family came in town. We're celebrating, we're getting together, we're doing something. That's how crazy we are when it comes to getting together um, and everything like that. So um, I'm not necessarily looking forward to 2020, 2020 ending because I know there are some aspects of 2020 that are gonna spill over into 2021, COVID being one of those things. Um, so I'm mainly looking forward to whatever day, month, time is gonna be the ending of COVID as we know it now. So I'm looking forward to that, whether it be next year, the year after, next month, next week, however, um, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking forward to. So yeah. Well, thank you, Chasta. It looks like Wendy's back. Wendy, do you have something that you're looking forward to? Um, yeah, um, something really wonderful. Um, my my sister runs Goodwill here in Rochester for the blind, and um, he got a huge contribution. He got $2 million from Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, and so it's going to be really helpful because a lot of the money is needed 
big time for blind people. So it's going to be a great holiday for us all. That's wonderful. Okay, so um, we're actually, I'm going to let Chasta take over and wrap up the end of the meeting. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for answering all my questions. Does anybody have any other final things they want to say before we end? No. No, I mean. Okay, so Susie says she wanted to end everything on a positive note. Um, so y'all know I'm extremely big on um, doing stuff that gets your energy up and all that kind of stuff. No, we're not about to dance or anything like that. Um, but we can always, um, we can always, you know, reflect over the time that we're not going to be uh, around each other or see each other. So, you know, in the next couple of weeks before uh, the holiday season ends, you know, listen to your favorite song, do your favorite dance move, um, however you want to do it. Spend as much time with people that you can, especially people um, that love you, people that you love. Get close, connected to them um, because um, COVID is running rampant amongst everybody. It's not just any type of demographic. People are dying left and right. And so COVID is not giving anybody time to say goodbye. It's not um, giving anybody time to, you know, get everything, get all their ducks in a row and all that kind of stuff like that. So um, just always remember, um, even with your family, your friends, be nice, be humble, be happy, you know, live life to the fullest, love hard. Because again, you don't know when it's going to be your last time to love on somebody. So um yeah, just, you know, be merry, be happy, all that good stuff. Um, 2020 wasn't what we thought it was going to be or what we felt it should have been. But at the end of the day, you're still here. You're still alive and you're still able to walk out of 2020 into 2021 and hold your head up high. Hold your head up high. Be optimistic. Don't put the Debbie Downer syndrome on 2021 because it's not in 2020 isn't ending the way we want it to end. Always remain positive. Always remain optimistic. Again, you can see that cup as two things. It can either be half full or half empty, but either way it go, you still have to see an opportunity. So um, that's what I have. That's all I have. Just be, be happy, be positive, make 2021 the best year that you can make it and if you need some help i'm just a song and a dance party away how about that <laughs> great great okay so that's it susie that's all i got all right thank you Shasta, and thank you everyone for being here tonight i hope you all have a happy hanukkah that's already going on and merry christmas and a good yule and all the other holidays that I can't think of right now. Well, thank you. All the best to you. Thank, thank you. Y'all have a good Happy night. Happy holidays. Thank you. Seeing you all again. Bye -bye. Thanks again. Bye -bye. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome.